two speakers uh, this morning who will join us for this wellness webinar uh, during this period on a very timely topic of uh, physical and emotional wellness. We are fortunate to have back with us Dr. Stefan Bugi, uh, board certified endocrinologist and, uh, and also an expert in stress and stress management and, and uh, also Dr. Stephanie Bugi Capecci who is also a doctor at, at a lecturer at Keck School of Medicine and Global Health. And uh, she is uh, also an expert in uh, stress management. And they have both lectured internationally and nationally to many professional groups. We're happy that they join us for our uh, Brighton uh, Dental Group to be able to impart some of their information on this very, very timely topic. So uh, please go ahead. I'm very happy and thankful for both of you. Great, uh, thank you. Thank you, Homa, for uh, inviting us. Uh, thank you for your uh, uh, kind and uh, warm words. So uh, we are going to talk about uh, part two of uh, this presentation. Uh, as you know, uh, it's uh, customary to disclaim uh, we have no financial um, uh, conflicts um, with what we present uh, in uh, this uh, presentation. And uh, here are the objectives of the presentation. Uh, understand the model of energy level and how to manage energy, um, uh, not the time. Define intervention to help to manage different levels of personal energy. And ultimately we talk about modalities to develop resilience uh, to stress and preserve physical, psychological, and uh, emotional health. So uh, last uh, week uh, we briefly discussed that uh, stress is life and life is stress. Uh, and uh, to talk about life uh, in uh, even two hours, obviously, it's, uh, uh, it's a challenge, but uh, we decided to focus on a few things which we thought are, uh, are important. Uh, and uh, what uh, we really know is that if we all experienced stress before, uh, COVID-19 obviously um, became a major stressor at uh, many, many levels. Uh, and um, uh, important cause of stress uh, is uh, social distancing. Uh, we received this uh, clip from a friend from, uh, from Europe and if the video works, I want to uh, sh share this with you guys. of coronavirus you are going sorry i don't know what happened let's see going to be quarantined but you have a choice do you a quarantine with your wife and child or b so uh, obviously uh, quarantine uh, it's uh, stressor for many of us uh, and uh, if we talk because about of coronavirus you are going to be quarantined but you have a choice do you a quarantine with your wife and child or b uh, because of corona okay let's move forward uh, so uh, quarantine uh, happens at uh, many levels and uh, not only in the human kingdom, but in the animal kingdom. So you can see Wilson, who is now working from, from home. So obviously the changes we need to, to make uh, during the COVID and post COVID-19 uh, can be a major cause of stressor for many of us. Uh, therefore, uh, we need to uh, adjust uh, to these uh, changes and uh, make uh, the best out of, uh, out of it. So um, when we talk about uh, stress management, uh, last uh, week uh, we talked about different modality to st uh, manage stress, uh, and these are shown here in this uh, cartoon, which I share with you. But you can see that the mod modalities to manage stress are uh, taught at uh, major institution. Uh, so here is an example of a stress management uh, program, which is done at the Harvard Medical School and among the modalities uh, to prevent and manage stress, uh, they talk about uh, learning how to relax, 
uh, use uh, breathing uh, technique, body scan, imagery, obviously proper nutrition, exercise, social support, and nurturing self. So uh, today uh, we are going to address some of uh, these uh, modalities uh, in order to um, better cope, uh, cope with stress. Uh, we discuss about the fact that uh, we experience uh, cycles of day and night. Uh, we talk about the importance of uh, proper night sleep and making sleep a priority at night. So uh, today we are going to uh, focus on um, how to manage stress uh, during uh, daytime. And uh, we found uh, an interesting uh, paper which was published uh, several years ago who, uh, where is described uh, better modality to uh, manage stress. Goal again is to prevent fatigue, which ultimately, as we discussed last time, will create uh, ill health, breakdown and uh, burnout. In the paper, uh, we um, are going to present some, some of uh, the recommendation uh, is uh, managing energy, no time. Uh, this was uh, published in 2007 in the Harvard uh, Business uh, Review uh, and is based on uh, some research uh, done by uh, Tony Schwartz uh, who did interviews with uh, uh, top uh, personality from different uh, organization throughout the United States and probably throughout the world, uh, finding modalities in which uh, people can uh, address uh, energy uh, in order to better cope with, uh, with stress. So here are the four energy levels which are described in this uh, paper. Uh, one is a spiritual energy, the second is the mental, emotional and the, the physical energy. So managing energy at this level uh, will have uh, very important uh, consequences if you want uh, in regards to stress and the coping uh, modality. For spiritual level, uh, it's very important to create, clarify priority, obviously focus on what is important. Uh, creating a ritual becomes important because when you have a ritual, uh, you know, uh, that uh, use less energy, therefore you can uh, uh, prevent, you know, fatigue. Uh, mental energy, uh, there are different modalities and uh, we tap into that last, uh, uh, last week uh, mentioning uh, the importance of uh, avoiding exposure uh, to negative media and to information uh, overload. Uh, what was very interesting uh, mentioned regarding this paper is the fact that checking email uh, alone uh, can be an important uh, stressor. And the practice, what is recommended uh, is to check email, uh, if possible, only twice a day, maybe 10 a.m., 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., uh, in order to uh, decrease the stress uh, related to uh, checking uh, the, the email. And uh, here is a paper uh, which was uh, uh, published several years ago, uh, which shows that uh, limited email use significantly lowered the daily stress. Uh, they uh, found that uh, if you check email uh, less frequent, uh, you can uh, reduce the psychological stress and uh, subsequently uh, improve the uh, well-being. So uh, there is research showing the benefits of uh, being online uh, less uh, frequent uh, and do uh, things which, uh, to disconnect from uh, uh, the information overload from, uh, from media especially now there is so much negative information uh, downloaded uh, to us on every uh, every day at every every moment so if we talk about um, the four level of energy uh, we use this cartoon just to uh, help us organize the, the presentation uh, and um, we talk about physical energy mental energy emotional and spiritual, which I briefly talk about, but we are going to focus on things which we can do on a daily basis and who can make uh, really uh, an important uh, uh, difference. Uh, we talk about sleep uh, earlier, uh, which obviously becomes very important as we talk about nighttime, but let's see what we can do during the daytime in order to improve, you know, um, our ability to cope with stress and uh, prevent fatigue. 
Um, as we look into the biological rhythm, we need to understand that daily uh, we experience um, activity and recycle. We need to understand that anytime we do an activity, uh, we are going to um, uh, use energy. Uh, we may be able to uh, do our best performance uh, to a certain point. After that, uh, we get tired, we experience stress, uh, and uh, what follows is uh, a resting period, uh, which uh, uh, will be ideal to occur 90 to 120 minutes. Uh, obviously, we may not be able to do this uh, in all the cycles, but if you rest uh, at the time when you really feel tired, even for a few minutes, uh, the benefits of that can be quite uh, significant. So the alternation of uh, um, work and rest uh, can occur for any age, can occur uh, for uh, um, college students, uh, can occur for workers, uh, and uh, are particularly important uh, when uh, we have a busy life. Uh, and the perfect example is uh, American society uh, where we are on the run and uh, where we do many things, uh, try to accomplish uh, multiple tasks um, without paying attention uh, to uh, our uh, body, without paying attention to the fact that we need to alternate uh, activity with, uh, with rest. So um, there is a lot of material uh, in the literature published regarding uh, the resting activity, uh, resting cycle. Uh, we are very familiar with the 20 minutes break published by Dr. Rossi several years ago, uh, which as is shown in the, uh, this slide, uh, can help to decrease uh, stress, uh, maximize performance, improve uh, overall uh, health and, and emotion. So without paying attention to rest throughout the day, uh, we are at uh, likelihood to uh, disrupt the ultradian cycles and the ultradian rhythm uh, and uh, create uh, uh, ultradian stress syndrome with multiple uh, consequences uh, regarding our physical, mental and emotional health. This now brings us to the subject of the power nap. A power nap is defined as a short period of sleep taken anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes, preferably sometime in the early to mid afternoon. Um, Taking a nap has tremendous benefits, numerous benefits that we will get to shortly. But first, the purpose of taking a nap, as mentioned earlier, is to revitalize us, re-energize us. Now, studies show that if we drink a cup of coffee before taking a nap, this can help lessen the effect of sleep inertia or the feeling of drowsiness or disorientation that we often experience when we wake up from sleep. And this type of nap is what's known as a coffee nap. Next slide. To prepare for a nap, it is recommended that one maintains a regular schedule and has their alarm clock set in order to uh, prevent from waking up feeling groggy. It's also important to um, keep your room as dark as possible in order to help you fall asleep faster. And make sure that the temperature in your room is neither too hot or too cold because this can interfere with the quality of your sleep. So here's a list of examples showing um, the benefits of napping. When we take a nap, this improves our level of alertness, creativity, mood, productivity, as well as reduce levels of stress and lower the risk of heart attack, stroke, diabetes, and excessive weight gain. Now, as long as you're in a safe environment, you can take a nap just about anywhere. And here are two examples of individuals who um, got creative. So big corporations like Google, Pfizer, Procter & Gamble, they took note of the benefits of napping and they introduced what are known as energy or sleep pods into their workplace. 
And what's unique about these chairs is that it provides a comfortable position for one uh, to rest in, while also offering uh, special lighting, vibrations, and other features to help one sleep and wake up. Um, these chairs are quite uh, pricey, so if you have access to one, be sure to use it. Next, uh, we're going to explore food to manage our energy levels. Next slide. So it is recommended that each of us should have about five servings of fresh fruits and vegetables each day and reduce or avoid unhealthy foods such as, next slide please, such as red meat, sweets, cheeses, fried and fast food. Thank you, next slide. So because we are what we eat, it's important for us to choose a healthy diet that will transform our minds and our bodies. So what constitutes a healthy diet? This is a diet that's rich in vitamins and minerals that we can get from a variety of sources such as fruits, vegetables, meats, seafood, whole grains, dairy products, as well as dark chocolate. Now, if possible, um, it's important to choose fresh produce that are grown locally and in season. And here's a link where you can find out what fruits and vegetables are grown in season. And the reason for this is that chances of um, your produce being in contact with uh, certain chemicals that are used during transportation and preservation are um, limited or less likely. Next slide. So here we have 12 examples of superfoods known to help with stress relief. And they um, help either by um, improving our gut flora, uh, increasing our levels of happiness, decreasing levels of anxiety, um, depression, fatigue, um, improving our brain function, um, many benefits. So let's begin with yogurt, which is a great source of probiotics. Then we have dark leafy green vegetables like spinach followed by um, turkey breast and oatmeal, which are linked to dopamine and serotonin. Uh, vitamin D, we can get from adequate exposure to sunlight as well as fortified milk. Omega-3 fatty acids, we can get from fish like salmon. With respect to antioxidants, we can turn to pistachios, blueberries, as well as dark chocolate. Um, dark chocolate is also rich in a mineral known as magnesium. And then we have avocados, which are a great source of potassium and zinc, which also helps with overall immunity. This we can find in nuts, um, such as cashews. Here are other examples of foods to improve our immune system. They include chicken soup, onions, garlic, ginger, honey, as well as uh, citrus fruits, which are rich in vitamin C. Next slide. Um, regarding uh, citrus food, I just um, found this information uh, in the internet. Obviously, we know that, let's say, orange juice uh, is uh, very rich in, in vitamin C, uh, which, as you know, it's important for the immune system. Uh, but uh, literature shows that, uh, in addition, uh, if you drink a cup of orange juice, you may get 498 international units of uh, vitamin A, uh, which is uh, between uh, 17 to 21 percent of uh, recommended uh, daily uh, allowances. Uh, in addition, uh, orange juice uh, is uh, rich in uh, folate, uh, which is very important for um, healthy cell growth uh, and uh, help us uh, with uh, the, the immune system. Uh, if you drink a, f a fresh uh, cup of orange juice, uh, you may get about 74 micrograms of folate uh, which represents 90% of uh, recommended daily allowance. Uh, copper, uh, also very important for the immune system, uh, uh, is present in uh, orange juice. One cup of orange juice provides about 109 micrograms of copper, uh, about 12% of uh, recommended daily allowances. So you could see that, you know, uh, simple food, fresh food, uh, food which is available for uh, many of us, uh, if we use it on a daily basis, uh, and uh, knowing the, the benefits uh, uh, which they, they provide can have a significant impact uh, on, uh, on our health, uh, particularly on um, 
preventing or uh, helping to cope with stress uh, and uh, in helping with the uh, immune system. Um, Stephanie mentioned earlier about the chocolate. Uh, you know, uh, we review literature uh, for several years uh, regarding this and uh, we did a study on uh, dark chocolate uh, regarding uh, stress reduction. Uh, clearly, it's uh, considered to be uh, a health food, a superfood uh, with uh, multiple, multiple benefits. Uh, what is shown in uh, this slide is uh, chocolate, uh, dark chocolate, uh, particularly help uh, with uh, uh, decreased stress and, uh, and depression. Uh, which is very uh, important in um, a today uh, environment. Uh, a recent paper uh, uh, quoted uh, in the internet, uh, based on the literature published in 2018, uh, showing that uh, dark chocolate uh, increased expression of genes involved in the activation of T cells, uh, which as you know are the white blood cells which help us uh, fight infection and uh, disease. So uh, clearly uh, chocolate can uh, have, according with this study, a beneficial effect regarding the, the immune system. And uh, here is a paper uh, which uh, shows that uh, dark chocolate uh, can uh, improve the gut flora uh, and um, an important part of our immune system and also can release uh, stress. So here is the uh, outline uh, of uh, this abstract uh, which shows that the uh, daily consumption of about 40 grams of uh, dark chocolate for two weeks was associated uh, with the significant reduction of the stress hormones, both uh, catecholamines and, and cortisol. And uh, not only that, but uh, uh, dark chocolate consumption uh, was associated with uh, improving uh, the gut microbial uh, metabolism and the flora, uh, which are very important, uh, again, when we talk about um, a healthy uh, immune system. Uh, intestinal flora, uh, as you know, uh, there is a lot of literature uh, regarding that. Uh, there's the reason probiotics are so popular uh, in, uh, for the last uh, several years. Uh, and uh, um, as I hear on the, uh, the news in the last uh, several weeks, 70% of most uh, of our immune system you know, it's related to uh, gut, uh, gut flora and uh, addressing this on a daily basis with uh, uh, right food uh, and uh, right activities uh, becomes very, uh, very important. Um, here is a slide uh, based on a 2016 uh, publication uh, in International Journal of Molecular Science showing that uh, uh, this biosis of gut uh, microbiota uh, is uh, responsible for autoimmune uh, disorders. Uh, therefore, uh, addressing uh, this particular uh, area of the body uh, with uh, right diet uh, becomes very, very important. So Stephanie is going to talk about exercise uh, as another uh, form of intervention at physical level. Thank you. So it is recommended that we get 150 minutes of exercise each week. And you can break this up any way you like. For example, 30 minutes a day, five times a week, combining um, cardio, stretching, strength, endurance training. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, the benefit of exercise uh, include, it helps us manage and maintain a healthy weight, build strong muscles, um, improve our bone mass and circulation, eliminate toxins, as well as reduce levels of stress and increase endorphins, um, which you all know is um, are associated with um, happiness. So when choosing your workout routine, choose activities that uh, you enjoy and mix it up and have fun with it. It's important to know that exercise is the most potent and underutilized antidepressant. It's free and it can be done anywhere, indoors and outdoors. So let's turn our attention to other ways to manage our energy level and improve our immune system. The first is social support. Uh, studies have shown that having a strong social support system has positive effects on both mind and body. 
So um, support can uh, be tangible, emotional, and or informational, and it can come from a single or multiple sources, such as family, friends, spiritual leader, healthcare professional, mentor, and or your pet. So um, make sure you surround yourself with people and animals um, that build you up, make you hungry for life, touch your heart, and nourish your soul. Another strategy um, to implement is laughter. Uh, when we see or hear something funny, this stimulates parts of our brain that are associated with happiness. Laughter is considered to be the secret to long life and long lasting relationships. If you think about it, what is the one trait that we look for in a significant other? It's sense of humor. We all want somebody who makes us laugh and somebody we can laugh with. Um, laughing, even for a brief moment, can have tremendous benefits on our overall mood and uh, help re-energize us, revitalize us. So uh, when we talk about emotional health, um, what a very simple and uh, probably a very powerful recommendation is to use uh, meditation. Um, meditation uh, is reported uh, in a several study uh, to increase the activity of the left prefrontal cortex. Uh, this is the area of the brain which uh, helps us to be happy. Uh, meditation, uh, like exercise, uh, can be done uh, at any time, uh, any place. Uh, it's important to practice to, to become uh, better uh, and uh, um, there are many, many modalities uh, uh, of uh, meditation uh, which can, can be used and you can uh, utilize whatever form of meditation is more appropriate for that uh, particular uh, uh, time or moment in uh, your life uh, based on uh, your location, based on what you do. Uh, but as mentioned, it's a simple, uh, rapid modality to, to distress and uh, create uh, some um, um, balance and the homeostatic uh, changes uh, in your mind, body, and in addressing emotional changes. Uh, John Kabat-Zinn, uh, it's uh, uh, an expert in mindfulness meditation, everyday life. Uh, he wrote several books uh, with multiple, you know, hands-on uh, modalities to, uh, to relax and uh, meditate. So there is tremendous amount of uh, literature. Uh, there are uh, uh, books on tapes. Uh, there are uh, apps which you can download and uh, can help you meditate before you go to sleep or anytime you are stressed, uh, anytime you are uncomfortable. So the, the amount of information, uh, it's tremendous. And uh, we, ca we can spend hours to, to, to discuss about this. But as I mentioned, each one is to look into things which they feel comfortable, things they want to, uh, to explore. Uh, the message is that the more you do, the better you are. Uh, the more you do, the easier it is for the body to respond to, to mind. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, uh, as I mentioned, a simple uh, modality um, to help to distress, uh, to really um, be able to cope with uh, all the changes uh, which uh, we all experience on a on daily basis. Uh, here is an example of uh, walking meditation. Uh, uh, teach uh, uh, Nathan, it's an expert uh, on uh, walking meditation. He travels throughout the world and uh, uh, teach uh, groups of uh, people uh, who are interested how to meditate. Uh, here is a group of students uh, at one of our facility who uh, listen to a stress uh, management program and uh, uh, after the lecture we uh, practice uh, walking meditation. Uh, this uh, can be done at any place, any time, can be done indoor and outdoors. Uh, can take between 5 to uh, 30 minutes, uh, average 10 minutes, but the better you become on this, uh, the shorter the, the amount of time you, you need to spend on. Uh, what is recommended is to uh, choose a flat surface uh, and uh, as you walk, you focus attention on your feet, at the sensation your feet experience as you touch the, uh, the, the ground. Uh, best time to use uh, walking meditation is uh, after eating, before sitting, when you are stressed uh, and when you take a break. 
and the literature shows that uh, if you practice walking meditation, you know, a few times a day, uh, the benefits of this is like spending half an hour or one hour of uh, practicing yoga. So again, a simple, rapid modality to uh, meditate uh, when you, whenever you have an opportunity uh, to, to walk. Um, so mindfulness meditation, uh, walking meditation, you can meditate as you eat chocolate, you can meditate when you uh, eat your favorite food, uh, even drink a cup of, of coffee or espresso. Uh, so uh, this uh, has uh, uh, endless uh, 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 possibilities uh, which uh, you need to explore and enjoy the, uh, the benefits. So um, overall, if we uh, talk about managing stress, uh, again, we focus on managing stress at night by having a good night's sleep and uh, allow, you know, uh, physical, mental, emotional uh, health uh, to be repaired, recovered during the daytime. Uh, when we manage stress during the daytime, I think uh, this model, uh, it's uh, simple, uh, easy to, to follow model. Uh, we need to keep in mind uh, that we can manage energy at different levels. Uh, and uh, the best time to uh, manage energy uh, or to do something for our physical, mental, emotional health uh, is when we experience the uh, rest period uh, or we should do this, uh, do this during the uh, rest period. Uh, so it becomes important to pay attention to your uh, activity and rest cycles. And remember, if we talk about the uh, ultra gain cycles, which we all experience, they start at the time when we wake up. So find out how do you feel, you know, uh, 90 to 120 minutes later, two hours later, uh, throughout the day, uh, even if you can, uh, if you want, you can make a note of that, for which are the times of the lowest energy, and choose each uh, one modality which is most appropriate for that moment uh, in order uh, to um, manage your, your energy. And the benefits are, are tremendous. Uh, Practic, uh, uh, what is mentioned in this paper, that uh, if you uh, address one core uh, of energy uh, that result in a double retention uh, uh, rate, uh, if we talk about, uh, you know, uh, employers uh, and uh, talk about uh, uh, people being happy to, to, to work for an organization. Uh, life satisfaction uh, increase if more uh, core needs are met. And uh, if you um, manage energy at uh, three levels, uh, practice uh, the positive well-being uh, almost uh, uh, double. So again, these are uh, data based on uh, uh, years of uh, research uh, done by different researchers uh, and which was very nicely uh, summarized in uh, uh, this particular uh, article uh, published in uh, uh, Harvard uh, Business, uh, Business Review. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, energy, uh, we talk a lot about stress, uh, and we talk about modalities to use at night versus daytime. Uh, and uh, you could see that uh, what is mentioned in these uh, six tips for coping with stress during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, which comes from the World Health Organization and International Federation of Red Cross, uh, what they recommended uh, ultimately uh, talk about the concepts uh, of uh, uh, addressing stress uh, and uh, it's a practice uh, uh, reviewing what uh, we, we discuss uh, in the last uh, uh, two weeks. So uh, I'm going to briefly go over this uh, since we still have uh, time. Uh, they mentioned it is normal to feel sad, stressed or confused uh, during uh, this uh, crisis. Uh, what becomes important is to do things which you did in the past, which help you to cope with stress uh, and uh, uh, develop skills to manage uh, physical, mental and emotional stress. Uh, be aware that not everything uh, which is said about COVID-19 is accurate. So again, um, getting uh, proper information uh, from uh, uh, reputable uh, sources become very, very important. Uh, if you are stay home, and obviously that is what all of us did for several weeks, 
uh, becomes very important to eat well, uh, get plenty of sleep, uh, keep uh, social contact, you know, uh, using uh, telemed uh, uh, telemedicine or uh, uh, using all the uh, media and technology uh, available to, to all of us. Uh, limit stress and the fear by decreased amount of time uh, we spend watching TV, uh, as mentioned uh, last week, uh, the amount of information uh, we are exposed every day, it's tremendous. And it's not only the information load, but it's the uh, negative information uh, and the negative news which we all experience on a daily basis. So uh, using uh, uh, less uh, uh, exposure to uh, TV and to media uh, during uh, these difficult times become more more important. Uh, it's very uh, important now to deal with our emotion in a healthy way. Uh, it's important to have a plan to address uh, things if you become uh, overwhelmed. And uh, as is mentioned um, um, by the experts, uh, there is always uh, help. Uh, from a uh, counselor, therapist, uh, personal physician, uh, which can uh, um, help us uh, cope and uh, uh, pass and uh, uh, successfully through uh, these uh, difficult, uh, difficult times. So uh, we are going to uh, stop here. Um, we want to thank you for your attention and uh, we just to remind you not to forget to relax. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, stress and relaxation are like uh, two sides of a coin. So you can be stressed or relaxed. You cannot be both. So if you learn to relax, physical, mental, emotional, uh, that should be clear, uh, great opportunity to uh, um, cope with stress uh, and uh, be healthy and uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy life. Uh, we'll uh, stop here. Uh, thank you for your attention uh, and we'll be happy to answer any questions uh, if we know the answers. Thank you again. Thank you, uh, Dr. Boogie and Dr. Boogie Pecci. Uh, really fantastic information, really timely topic. Uh, I can't uh, thank you enough for uh, giving us all of this information especially at this time when we can definitely use that to improve our health we hear over and over those people who are succumbing to uh, covid-19 are those who are in have underlying uh, health conditions and this is the time to improve our physical uh, health and also uh, emotional health to be able to deal with that so this is really a timely uh, topic at this moment. And I thank you for all of this information that you shared with us. We have some questions. Uh, Josie uh, wants to know whether, what is the percentage of the dark cocoa and the chocolate uh, that you recommend? And also whether or not, if the dark chocolate has any caramel filling or other types of filling would be just as effective. So Stephanie, you want to address this? So, uh, you know, we did a study uh, in the review literature, 70% uh, uh, or uh, more uh, dark chocolate is probably the, the best. Um, it's considered to be a superfood. Uh, as we review the literature, uh, uh, as we work on our paper to, to publish, hopefully soon, uh, we find that the benefits of this are, are tremendous. So experts on chocolate say, this is the best food uh, available to all of us. Ideally is to be organic. Um, probably a chocolate bar would be better than a chocolate filled with uh, caramel or other, uh, other ingredients because that may take away from the benefits of uh, you know, uh, cacao, which is the uh, essential ingredient in, uh, in that chocolate. So 70% or above organic cold press may be the ideal a form of chocolate you can use. Uh, is, is there any uh, stimulant effect of chocolate? And should we be aware of at what time of day we consume that uh, so that it will not interfere with sleep? 
That's, that's true. You know, uh, chocolate is uh, caffeine and the theobromine, uh, both of them have a stimulant effect. So probably, uh, you know, using them uh, in the early part of the day may be a better choice, particularly for those who experience uh, uh, insomnia. Uh, but uh, again, uh, if you look into the chocolate, maybe different uh, if you are a lark or an owl, you know. So uh, from what we found in the literature, is that uh, use chocolate at the time when you are tired, when you at the time you are stressed. The amount of coffee in the chocolate shouldn't interfere too much with the sleep unless you talk about, you know, young, uh, uh, young uh, children. Um, but for an adult, that probably should be okay. You know, you, uh, you try it, see how you respond. Obviously, if you get, uh, let's say, 10 grams of chocolate and you cannot sleep at night, and if that is the reason, don't eat it at night, so have it in the morning but it's a very important um, source of energy. It's loaded with antioxidants, uh, influence the immune system, influence the gut uh, flora. Uh, so the benefits uh, are from what, what you know, read in the literature are tremendous, tremendous. Uh, so sneaker bar is not uh, good, right? <laughs> uh, probably not ideal. <laughs> uh, if you don't have anything else, obviously that's an alternative. As you know, many times uh, uh, you, you order things from the market and if they don't have it, they, uh, you need to think about alternative. Uh, but I think it's a better choice uh, than a regular candy bar, you know. Right. So we have a question from one of the participants about uh, daily dose of vitamin C that you recommend? You know, I think in the slide I, I mentioned, they talk about 124 or 125 milligrams. So taking this, you don't need to take large dose of vitamin, vitamin C. Uh, as you know, probably the dose which is, you can find in, multi, uh, uh, in vitamin C over the counter, 250 milligrams of vitamin C, uh, probably on daily basis may, may be fine. Would be probably better if you eat the right uh, diet and get your vitamins from, uh, you know, healthy food, uh, fruits and vegetables instead of getting uh, supplements. But for those who don't have access to a healthy diet, uh, obviously uh, supplement may, may, may be fine. Uh, you know, like with anything, you, you need to pay attention, uh, particularly to multivitamins, you know, you need to get good quality vitamins you really absorb because sometimes uh, I remember patients mentioned that they took a multivitamin and then next day they found that uh, uh, was in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the stool. So you need to find the vitamin which is absorbed uh, and you need to find the vitamin which you believe in, uh, has, uh, uh, you know, good uh, uh, ingredients uh, and uh, you tolerate it well. So along that line, can you also, I know you uh, put a special emphasis on, on magnesium. Uh, any uh, special uh, concentration or, or the dosage of magnesium daily that you recommend? Uh, you know, uh, again, if you read the literature, uh, the daily uh, recommended dose is between three to 400 milligrams, a little bit less for, for women, more for, uh, for men. Uh, you need to keep in mind that uh, our uh, diet is unfortunately uh, magnesium depleted. Uh, if you look into the you know, white flour and uh, uh, processed food, it is depleted of uh, this very important mineral. So uh, we uh, ingest probably 50% less magnesium now than we did, uh, let's say, 100 years ago. Uh, and uh, you cannot get, uh, the body doesn't uh, manufacture magnesium you need to get it from exogenous source. So you need to look into the um, diet, which is uh, rich in magnesium and chocolate is uh, one of them, uh, dark green vegetables uh, uh, are others. But if you are not able to proper diet to get the, what you need, you may need to get a magnesium supplement. Uh, and as you do that, you need to understand like, uh, as you talk about calcium, there are different sorts of magnesium. So you need to find the magnesium, which is uh, well absorbed, and that doesn't give you GI side effects uh, or other uh, potential uh, negative, uh, negative effects. But it's very important mineral. Uh, you know, again, the experts feel that probably is the most important mineral of all because those who will become magnesium depleted, they will become uh, uh, low in calcium and potassium. Uh, and the, the consequences of uh, 
um, mag deficiency at multiple multiple levels. Uh, what about um, any potential uh, downside of some of these uh, supplements that people may take? Uh, for example, let's say zinc. W you know, is there any uh, downside by t uh, taking some some of these supplements of, of vitamins and minerals? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Of course, they are. You know, you, you realize uh, we live in a very complex world. Uh, and uh, many times uh, you don't just get uh, what uh, it's, it's written on, on a particular product. Uh, many of them can be contaminated or can have other uh, ingredients uh, which uh, may uh, create uh, side effects. From zinc, from what I know, uh, some people cannot tolerate it because of uh, nausea. Um, however, zinc is an important um, mineral if you uh, uh, think about the, the immune system. Uh, and uh, I was remember I, I remember as we were reading about uh, cold dizzy, uh, uh, which is an uh, interesting uh, um, compound you can use when you are exposed to uh, to a virus. Uh, if you have a cold dizzy uh, and uh, you, you suck on the particular candy, uh, that creates a film of zinc in the nasopharynx, and that film protects uh, the multiplication of the virus in the um, nasopharynx. Uh, which has a beneficial effect. So uh, you need to look into different products. Uh, again, anything you do, you need to see how you respond to what, what you take. Uh, some people may tolerate something better than, than others. So always, you know, uh, use a small amount, use it maybe, uh, try on empty stomach after eating, see when you can tolerate that particular product uh, better. But it's important, like anything else, uh, in a small amount has very important benefits regarding the immune system. I had read that, um, that uh, zinc may have some correlation with Alzheimer as uh, zinc can kind of increase the uh, inflammation in the brain. Uh, you know, zinc that was contained in some, let's say, talcum powder and other types of, of uh, material. Is there any... Um, different forms of some of the minerals that could have differential effect? You know, yeah, that's, that's a good point. I, I, I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, as we, as things are studied, we find out that things which we thought are good may not be as good uh, anymore. Uh, so that's the reason uh, we need to be careful with the supplements. Uh, probably it's better to eat food which has those kind of ingredients and the likelihood to absorb large quantity or to be contaminated will be uh, less likely. That's the reason I think a healthy diet can make a big difference. As Stephanie mentioned uh, in um, the, the slides we, we share uh, with you, uh, there are so many good things in what, what we eat. And again, in, in California, since we have this beautiful weather uh, and uh, we bring food almost uh, um, any kind of food we need, uh, we have the option to have a healthy diet and uh, to avoid supplements. When there is no alternative, use supplements. Obviously, we don't need to use it for a long period of time, uh, but you use it as, uh, as needed. But again, very, very important to, to pay attention to potential side effects uh, of everything uh, which is particularly synthetic, uh, you know, homemade uh, or human made uh, instead of uh, natural products. Uh there is some information about iodine and uh, povidine iodine being antimicrobial and being actually a very good way to disinfect uh, the you know uh, COVID-19 uh, virus and there are some um, ENTs who are recommending rinsing the nasal passages with the povidine iodine, half a percent, 0.5 percent. As an endocrinologist, would you have any concern with people doing that in terms of toxicity to the thyroid? You know, it's true. Uh, as you know, uh, until uh, 10, 20 years ago, iodine was probably the number one, you know, antiseptic used in the pre op area. And uh, um, then we learned that if you put iodine on an open wound, uh, high concentration, uh, that will interfere with the granulation of uh, tissue. Um, therefore, a half strength uh, betadine was recommended to, to put on, on open wound instead of you know, full strength. Uh, 
uh, actually the amount of iodine uh, can be overwhelming for the for the thyroid uh, and for those who may have uh, um, inherited um, or acquired uh, deficiency to metabolize iodine uh, they uh, can uh, you know uh, especially if they have a uh, small subclinical goiter they can maybe at least to develop um, you know thyrotoxicosis so uh, again for uh, uh, application once or twice uh, in a certain situation probably may be okay but if you do this uh, routinely uh, you know uh, the likelihood of uh, iodine overload uh, needs to be uh, taken in consideration so moderation is, is the is the secret uh, and we need to use things uh, as as needed uh, we cannot abuse things because even the best thing we think are how healthy ultimately can have uh, you know uh, downsides and uh, the potential negative effects. Uh, so uh, Stephanie mentioned about the coffee nap. That's a really interesting concept because most people will uh, not use uh, coffee right before going to sleep or uh, or basically taking a nap. So that's a really uh, nice comment. Uh, with those people who you know, drink tea instead of coffee, would, there, would that work just as well? You know, I, I suspect so. We, we reviewed some literature, uh, this was published by, by NASA several years ago. Uh, practic, uh, in the coffee, uh, there are multiple ingredients, but the caffeine is the one which makes, makes a difference. If you drink green tea, especially if you know the amount of caffeine which is in the green tea, and you want to use it instead of coffee, just to improve uh, your, uh, you know, uh, the sleep inertia when you get up from your sleeping nap or the taking a nap, I think the benefits probably should be the same. You can have a piece of chocolate practice, you know, even before you take a nap. Uh, and then when you get up, uh, I suspect that uh, you may have the benefits. But the studies were done with, uh, uh, with uh, coffee. Again, this was done because uh, they studied the uh, uh, cosmonauts to find out what can help them to recover from a nap uh, and be fully alert uh, and not to make errors and things of this sort, which can be, you know, uh, quite, uh, quite important. So, uh, but green, green tea or any other uh, uh, product, which is caffeine, I suspect uh, may have the same kind of, uh, of benefit. You also are a good advocate of, of wine. Uh, can you make some suggestions between uh, red wine <laughs> versus white wine? Yeah. wine? Yeah, you know, obviously, uh, a good quality wine. Uh, it's uh, it's healthy in moderation. Uh, you know, with the proper food, the probably glass of wine may be uh, may be healthy. Um, I I was surprised. I, I I did a presentation. Practice Stephanie helped me to put a, a presentation together on um, the benefits of uh, wine and chocolate, and uh, the the literature. It's uh, you know, it's not very, very strong. You, you have benefits. Uh, there is data which shows the J uh, shape uh, curve. You know, if you don't drink uh, at all, there is high mortality. If you drink a lot, it's high mortality. So you need to be in the, in the moderation, you know. Uh, so from time to time, a glass of red wine, I think it's, it's healthy. There are uh, uh, multiple, um, multiple benefits. Uh, and the, the, the effect which wine has at the cardiovascular level, um, it's related to the changes which occurs in the liver as a result of uh, drinking wine and uh, changing some of the uh, lipid uh, metabolism. Uh, but again, moderation and uh, use it uh, proper time with the proper food. I think it's, uh, it's part of uh, eating healthy. Okay. Josie has a question about the dosage of vitamin C. If you are uh, feeling sick, would you recommend upping the dose and also she's asking whether or not multivitamins such as uh, Centrum or any other uh, brands will have any benefit. You know, the, the data I'm aware, uh, and probably if you follow the news, you, you may hear that even for some patients who are exposed to COVID-19, they got uh, huge doses of vitamin C, um, probably not by, by mouth, but uh, parenteral. Uh, I'm aware of some uh, literature, which is all literature, uh, which shows that if you experience a flu, um, uh, taking a relative large dose of vitamin C, and we talk about three to four grams, um, 
can have a beneficial effect. Uh, but you need to keep in mind that uh, vitamin C, like anything else, can have uh, side effects. Obviously, at a higher dose, people develop uh, loose bowel movements, uh, probably GI problems, and then uh, there are uh, risk of uh, kidney stone. So again, you, you need to, to understand the, the benefits and, and the risk um, of uh, uh, anything we, we take on on daily basis, especially when you use higher doses. We need to be careful and think twice uh, before uh, exploring that. Uh, probably it's good to, to check with the, the physician, your physician, be sure that you don't have any predisposition for kidney stone or GI problems when you decide to take a high dose of, uh, of vitamin C. Um, again, uh, probably uh, reviewing some, some literature uh, on, on the subject, you may find additional information, but that's what I, I, I recall uh, regarding vitamin C, uh, studies done some time ago uh, showing some beneficial effect, but always you need to think about risk and benefits like with anything else. For patients undergoing surgery, because vi vitamin C is very important for wound healing and recovery yeah. from surgery, and especially uh, for immune system, as well as, as bone uh, healing, we usually recommend about 3,000 milligram a day. And some of our patients actually receive a, a vitamin C drip if they're undergoing IV sedation. I see. Um, for, for, how long time, for how long time do you use that? Uh, just, the, the, just, well, if they're getting a drip, they get it during IV sedation and uh, our recommendation is during the initial uh, healing, which is the first two weeks after surgery, to up the dose uh, to a lot of wound healing to take place. You know, uh, again, uh, I suspect this is, is fine. Again, uh, probably people need to drink a little bit more fluids during this time. As I mentioned, some people can be uh, at risk to develop kidney stones and you don't want them to, to blame, you know, uh, kidney stone based on the uh, high dose of, uh, of vitamin C. Uh, so uh, I, I, will, I will pay attention to that particular, uh, that particular uh, um, situation, especially that uh, uh, there is a tendency, as from what I know uh, from many patients, people don't drink enough water. Uh, and uh, obviously with a concentrated urine uh, and a high dose of vitamin C, the likelihood to create kidney stone may be uh, somewhat higher. So recommend more, more fluids during this period of time, and that uh, I suspect may be, may be safer. Okay. So uh, you have been very generous, uh, both uh, of you, uh, Dr. S uh, Stefan Boogie and Dr. Stephanie Boogie Capeci, uh, very uh, generous with your time, with the information that you share with us. We really appreciate that. It's very timely information. You are so, so loaded with. Uh, useful information. So I, I can't thank you enough for giving this information for all of us. Thank you, Omar. Thank you for, uh, for inviting us. It was, a, it was a pleasure to, to share this with you guys. I, I wish all of you good health and thank the you same. for joining us for this webinar. Thank you again. Okay. Take all care. Sure. Be well. Bye-bye.